Hey, what's going on everyone? This is our reviews back with another video and today we're talking about battery life on iOS 17.1, the latest iOS 17 update by Apple. Now, I've seen a lot of reports from iOS users having big issues with battery life on iOS 17.1, even though in my experience using my device on iOS 17.1 since the first beta was released and then of course the final release as well I had quite good battery life with this update. But as always, not all issues with iOS and iPhones are the same for all the users. Of course, different users, different iPhones will have different experiences and that of course even leads to different battery lives. So as you can see right here in the last few days where I was using iOS 17.1, the few ones here, like three last ones are iOS 17.2, but these right here you can see about 76, 77% battery life, nine hours, 57 minutes. And then we have here about 70% battery life, eight hours, five minutes. And it goes on right here about nine hours with about 65% battery life. As you can see, the battery life on my device actually was quite good. But of course, this is a newer device with the battery health currently at 100%, so you would expect that. But if you're one of the users that actually is having issues with battery life on iOS 17.1, here are a few tips and tricks that will help you improve the battery life on your iOS 17.1 device. Now, the first thing I would do if I had battery problems on iOS 17.1 is update all the apps to the latest version. Now, of course, all the apps will be most actually most of them, especially the bigger apps will be updated to support a software release. So make sure you always have the latest update of each app. That way you know that it is actually working as it should on that update. Now, if you don't want to do this, if you don't want to bother updating it, you can see right here, support for iOS 17, you need that update. If you don't want to bother do that manually, you can go to settings, go to app store and make sure you have app updates enabled and they will be enabled and of course update it automatically. Now, when it comes to apps, another thing I suggest you do is find the apps that are draining the battery on your iPhone, especially now that we have iOS 17, which is still a new update, a lot of apps won't have an update to support iOS 17, which means that those apps might actually be using a ton of battery, more than they should. Now, the way to find those apps, head on to your battery settings, and then right here, we'll see a list of all the apps that are using battery on your iPhone. Go to the last 10 days here and see which apps have used the most battery on your iPhone. If you see here apps that you don't use that much, but they are still around the top here, make sure you remove that app and replace it with another one because that app is actually draining the battery on your iPhone. Another setting I would check is the new AirDrop feature. If you go to general here and then go to AirDrop, you will find here bring devices together. Now this is a cool feature and all that, but it will of course consume battery as your iPhone is constantly looking for devices nearby to actually do the airdrop via the bringing devices together. So if you use that feature very early or you don't want to use it, make sure you have it switched off. It will most likely save you a ton of battery. Now, another thing I suggest you do, if you have a newer iPhone with USB type C, make sure you go to your settings and go under battery and see here, USB accessories right here you can see a section for USB-C, which means that that's the battery that you are consuming out of your iPhone by charging your other devices. So if you just use your iPhone with USB type C, you know, you can charge your maybe your AirPods or your Apple watch. Just know that that of course consumes a ton of battery. So make sure you check this and see if you're actually using a lot of your own iPhone battery to actually charge other devices. Now new on iOS 17 is of course a standby as well. And with 17.1, we even have some more options here for devices that have the standby mode that will actually stay always on like the iPhone 14 Pros and the iPhone 15 Pros. Now here, Apple has given us some options. And of course, anytime Apple gives you an option to actually turn off a feature, you know that that feature actually does consume a ton of battery. So of course, when you're on the standby mode, you have your iPhone plugged in 
and charging, but it will make your iPhone charge slower because it's still consuming battery at the same time while it's charging. And especially if you're charging like with a wireless charger or with a laptop, which of course charges really slow, then this will have a huge impact. So what you will need to do here is maybe choose after 20 seconds. So the display is cut off after 20 seconds and make sure you have disabled here motion to wake because this will make your iPhone just stand by every time trying to look for a motion to actually activate the standby mode that way of course consuming a ton of battery the same goes of course for the always on display the always on display even though it's a great feature it will still consume some battery on your iphone especially during the day when you're on brighter environments and the standby mode is actually much much brighter than usual now you can of course disable it by going under display and brightness here you will have the always on display here you can choose to not show the wallpaper if you just want to have the clock and the widgets that means that the screen will be totally black the only things light up will be the clock and the widget that way of course you will have still your always on display but of course also save a ton of battery now during my experience using iphones for the last few years of course i found out that the one thing that actually does consume a ton of battery is the vibrating engine of your iphone which means that all the haptics all the vibrations that come into your iphone will of course consume battery so you can go to sounds and haptics here and you will find a section for haptics now i have always switched it to never play but if you just want to have them i suggest that you only play them on the silent mode so you get a notification on silent mode you get the haptic feedback you're not on the silent mode of course you will get the tone and not the haptic feedback on iOS 17, we have a cool new feature for the lock screen where we can shuffle wallpapers. And now with iOS 17.1, we have the ability to choose an album and shuffle those wallpapers on the lock screen. Now this of course is pretty cool and probably a lot of people will use it now that we can just choose an album. But also the frequency right here is really, really important. So if you set it to hourly or daily, I believe you're good to go. But if you set it on tap or on lock, that means that it actually consumes a, a lot of battery because changing wallpapers will require CPU power. That way, of course, battery as well. And if you just do that on tap or every time you unlock your device, you probably unlock your device and around like maybe 100 times a day. It will actually have a huge impact on the battery life of your device. Now that you're on iOS 17.1, you probably know that Apple has also released the first beta of 17.2. A lot of people will want to update to get the new features or they just have bad battery life on iOS 17.1 and they think that they can solve that by updating to iOS 17.2 beta. Now I would not recommend actually you do that especially for the first few betas. So make sure you disable your beta updates until an update is a bit later on their stages maybe beta 3 or beta 4 because just updating your iphone to new beta won't actually resolve probably your battery problem so make sure you don't install a beta especially if you have an older device and you use it as your main device and now let's talk about some other features of ios which actually do consume a ton of battery not every feature that actually requires your iphone to, to just stand by to listen for like a command or a sound or something like that will consume battery and one of them can be found under accessibility right here you will have sound recognition if you don't actually need this feature if you don't think you need it make sure to turn it off this will make your device stand by all the time to listen for those sounds and of course notify you that way of course it consumes a ton of battery the same goes for Siri. Now, if you go under accessibility and you go to the Siri settings, you will have something here called always listen for the hey word, which means that your iPhone will be listening for the word all the time. It doesn't matter where your iPhone is standing on a table, it's face down, is in your pocket. It will be st actually listening for that word all the time, which means that, of course, it consumes battery. 
Now right here under accessibility, we can also find another feature under touch here, and that is back tap. Now back tap by itself, of course, won't be activated unless you do the double tap or the triple tap, but a lot of times you will do that by accident. If you have here maybe, let's say the camera app set up or maybe your flashlight, a lot of times you will find yourself turning them on by accident, which means that you're just consuming unnecessary battery battery life. So which means that if you actually not tend to use these, make sure you have them turned off. Widgets are of course a big part of iOS. On the home screen and lock screen, this is the same for both of these. Now, if you have widgets that actually require to update all the time, like this one right here from stocks, or if you have interactive widgets that you interact with them all the time, they do consume battery. It goes the same for the lock screen as well. There are also a lot of different apps that offer animated widgets on the lock screen and home screen. I know they are cool, you'll probably use them like for a few hours, maybe a day or two, but don't keep them on all the time because they do consume battery on your iPhone. Next up, we're talking about live activities. Don't use a live activity unless you actually need it. Live activities do consume a ton of battery, and especially if you have more frequent updates enabled, that will drain the battery out of your iPhone. You can see it right here. If we go under the TV settings, we have here live activities. You can see this app offers more frequent updates. We can enable them from here, but it also says right here, allowing more frequent updates, you will see real-time information, but it will also drain the battery faster. That means that it will actually do a lot of damage to the battery life, so make sure you have at least this enabled if you don't actually need it. There are a few different features on the iPhone that are actually quite old and we don't pay attention to them, just keep them on all the time, but they will have an impact on the battery life of our iPhones, especially personal hotspot. Keeping the personal hotspot on all the time is not a good choice if you want to save battery on your iPhone. Make sure you only enable it when you actually need to do that. Another thing you should have enabled all the time is auto brightness. I see a lot of people just manually move up and down the brightness of their iPhone. That's actually not the right choice. Head on to your settings, accessibility, and then go to display and text size all the way down. You will have auto brightness here. Now I have it off because I'm shooting a video, but all the time I will have it on. This is a great feature and it actually works quite good. So you will have the proper brightness all the time and of course save a ton of battery. Now when it comes to iOS, of course a lot of us, maybe most of us, will always close the apps out of our iPhones. You shouldn't do that, this has been confirmed by Apple, this will just drain the battery on your iPhone. Closing apps will make every app reload from the beginning every time you open it. Now do that myself, I know it's bad, but I just, I'm used to that and I do that all the time. You can see whenever I go to the app switcher, there will be one or two apps maximum. I always close every app out of the app switcher, but you shouldn't do that. That's actually bad and will have a bad impact on battery life of your iPhone. Next is Rise to Wake, you can find it under display and brightness, right here it says Rise to Wake, you just rise your iPhone from your pocket, from a table, it will wake up the screen of your iPhone, even though you might not need it, you pick up your iPhone, you want to put it in your pocket, it will bright up the screen without you needing it for anything at all, make sure you have it turned off from here. So that's basically it for this video guys, hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope these tips and tricks will help you get better battery life on iOS 17.1. If you liked the video, make sure to leave a like of course and subscribe for more and I will see you on the next one.